drinks. It will also take time to get back what belongs to you. Yes, but I'm going to, Spencer. I am going to get back what belongs to me. Of course you will. I don't care who's alive or who's dead. That doesn't matter. There's still his widow. That matters a great deal. I am going to get back what belongs to me. That woman is not Mrs. Schuyler Whitney, and she is not going to stand in my way. Now lie back, rest. You're not going to get rid of that headache by exciting yourself. I just got tired. I got tired in that hospital that you stuck me in looking out at the mountains and thinking about everything that had been stolen from me. We'll get it back for you. I promise we will, Sky. You said that in Switzerland. How many months ago was that now? I promised to try, that's all. You had no proof of your identity, remember? There was a man in this town who had more than enough proof. He fooled you too, Spencer. Just as he fooled this whole damn town. Still, there was no point in rushing in and making accusations, especially with you only barely functional. I'm strong enough. I, I made it here, didn't I? It's, it's just that I'm tired. I, and walking around the town. That was foolhardy. What if you'd been seen? People would have thought you were a ghost. I wanted to see the places that you had told me about. I wanted to see the Whitney Theater and the, the dance studio. Still, you must promise not to be so careless in the future. I just want to see things happen. I'm so tired of waiting. It won't be long now, Sky. Trust us. We'll prove that man was a counterfeit. We'll prove that the Whitney estate belongs to us. To you. To you, and not that woman. sleep i can get rid of this headache oh let me this always helps oh. libby will make the headache better oh. just relax and trust me oh. yes that always does make it feel better libby. you've been improving steadily these past few months just the fact that you were able to get around is a good sign are you sure that no one saw you when you were skulking around town like a ghost no, no, I, I don't think so. Was there anyone you wanted to see? Yes, there was one person. Who was that? A girl I met in Samaritz. She was the first memory I had when I woke up in the hospital. And when something is, is with you, as long as that, it uh, becomes part of you. But you don't even remember her name, do you? I remember it very well. I remember everything about Valerie. You know, there was a photograph. Nurse Mannerheim said that I had been carrying it with me. It was the only thing that I was carrying. Yes, there was a photograph. But it disappeared some time ago. I don't know where What it's difference at. does it make? She's probably long married by now. Oh, fat and ugly. You have a new life to lead now, Sky, as soon as you're well. He's not well enough to stay here alone. I think he's got to be moved. Where? Where he can get some attention. Where he won't wander off and get another headache. We can take him to my place. I've got a suite, so there's enough room. And I can say he's my husband. You could say that, couldn't you, Libby? 
All right. That's what we'll do. Amigo, Calvin. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nicole. You know, I, uh, I usually drink my beer out of a can, but I think I could really get used to it. Well, this is penthouse living. Oh, you? and not bad, I might add. Not bad. So go ahead and finish your story about New York. Oh, New York. Well, I don't know. What can you say about New York? It's all there. All the good and all the bad. It's all right. Oh, there. it sure is there, isn't it? Well, how is Star? You finally got to see her, didn't you? Oh, yeah. You know, actually, the show wasn't all that hot, but she... She was terrific. She got four curtain calls. Well, That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, Miles keeps promising that we're going to take some time off, so maybe we'll include New York in our plans and go and see Star. Oh, sounds great. Be sure to tell me. I mean, she would be tickled pink to get you some house seats. <laughs> well, there's no hurry. Miles keeps promising, but it hasn't happened yet. No. Uh, no, well, what about you two? You ready for a little vacation? Um, oh, we'd love to, but we just can't afford it. Oh, my heart really bleeds for you guys living in penthouses. <laughs> By the way, uh, what's happening with this theater thing? Is it really all washed yeah, up? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. I mean, Jim has hopes of saving it, but I don't see how. It's such a pity. Raven had no right to be so cruel. Yeah. Hey, listen, why don't, uh, why don't the two of you go to New York and try your luck? I mean, you could be a team. Uh, you know? no, we don't have plans uh, to travel. <laughs> <laughs> At least not to New York. Mm hmm do I surmise you've got plans to travel elsewhere? Well, we've had a bit of news, Calvin, about Jody's mother. She's very ill. And there is the possibility that Jody may be going to Springfield in a couple of days to see about and it. And if she goes, I'm going with her. Oh, my goodness, the dinner. I just thought of it. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Sure. Well, Calvin, I am really glad you could come over tonight. I'm just sorry Damien couldn't. Yeah, well, he, uh, he really wanted to, but, uh... He had another date with a certain lady. Mrs. Saxon, it was really very gracious of you to invite me to join you. Why, Damien, you're doing me a favor. I needed a dining companion this evening. I don't like dining alone at home. Oh, I'm sure that's true, especially with Raven being gone. Oh, of course. I don't see much of Raven, even when she is here. Well, I meant since she's been mourning the death of her husband. Yes. That was the only thing that curtailed her activities. But I have an idea that this holiday is going to mark the end of Raven's mourning period. <laughs> have you heard from Raven at all? Not a word. You know, I have to say, Mrs. Saxon, I'm really very glad that she's no longer mourning Sky's death. After all, Damien, he was her husband and she did love him. Yes, but he was much more dangerous for her than she's willing to admit. I'm sorry, Mrs. Saxon, but I'm still convinced that Sky Whitney meant Raven to be his third murder victim. I wish you hadn't said that. After all, he was the man she loved. To say nothing of being my nephew. I know. I don't think there's any harm in letting Raven preserve her illusions about Skyler. And I have an idea that somewhere deep down inside of her, she realizes the full truth. After all, she does have pride. <laughs> yeah, she does have pride. And truth, I have to say that I admire that about her. I don't believe it. What's wrong? Well, I thought this restaurant had more class. What do you mean? Well, I just saw an old friend of mine come in. I didn't even know he was back in town. Well, 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 look who's here, uh... Taylor, isn't that it, Taylor? Tyler, detective to you, pal. Oh, that's right, Detective Tyler, I forgot. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, what are you doing back in Monticello? I thought you'd be sick of this place. Oh, uh, I'm going to open up a little business here. By the way, this is my new secretary, Bobby Kenilworth. Say hello, honey. Well, hello, honey. I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Geraldine Sachs. <clears throat> How do you do? Hello. Mrs. Geraldine Sachs? I've read about you in the newspaper. I've always wanted to meet you. Let's have lunch sometime. Uh, not now, honey. Uh, tell me, Mr. Saxon, uh, the lieutenant here is a good friend of yours? Oh, yes, indeed. Hmm. I'd be very careful about what I talked about with the lieutenant. You see, he has this terrible hang-up about instant replays. A real lieutenant? Like in the TV shows? Uh, no, honey, not quite. You see, uh, the detectives on television, they almost never get killed. We'll see you around. It's been a pleasure. Say goodbye, baby. Goodbye, baby. And goodbye, Geraldine. I hope to see you again sometime. Eddie, you didn't tell me you had all these important friends. That's Geraldine's. Hello? Oh, 
Hi, darling. We're all here just waiting for you. Hmm? What? Go ahead. I'm listening. If you ask me, I don't think Jody has any obligation to go up there and see her mother. I mean, let's face it. If, if the situation was reversed, her mother would never do the same for her. What's the matter? Didn't, didn't you hear from her when you were in the hospital having your operation? Well, I, I wrote her a letter, but I never received an answer. And she never sent back so much as a get well card. I think that says it all. Well, it doesn't, unfortunately. I mean, my mother is capable of not feeling guilty about something like that. I'm not. Yeah, I know exactly what that's like. So, uh, it's up to you to do something about it. Well, it means that we're going to have to bite the bullet and go see her for Jody's peace of mind. Guess what? Well, if that was Miles, he's going to be late for dinner. Uh-huh. <laughs> but there is some good news. Mm -hmm. He said he just talked to a doctor friend of his, two of them, as a matter of fact, and they have agreed to take over his practice for a little while. That's great. <laughs> now you can take your vacation. Congratulations. You deserve it, Nicole. <laughs> well drink deserved. To that. All right. And he also mentioned something else. He said that he thought our holiday should include a little side trip to Springfield. No. No, that's not fair. No, you should be going to Europe or something, right? It just means Miles has to visit another patient. Well, Nicole. you argue with him, then I'm not going to. I think it's a great idea. Do you know what? You are too nice. You are so <laughs> nice, it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, could I uh, interject a little practical question here? Go ahead. Did anybody call Mrs. Travis to tell her that you were all coming? Well, we only found out that she was ill a couple of days ago. Oh, well, might be a good idea to let her know, don't you think? I think Calvin's right. She may not be there anymore. Oh, she could be in the hospital, for instance. No, Dr. Hilmer said that she refused to go to the hospital. I guess you're right. I think we should call, don't you think yeah, so, Jody? Yeah, well, I don't really know if I can speak to her. I mean, I haven't talked to her in years. And there's another problem. When, when I was living there, we didn't have a phone, and I really doubted if she has one now. Then how does Hilmer know her condition? Because of that neighbor. What was her name? Mrs. Ingersoll, ma'am. Mrs. Ingersoll. Well, there you've got her name. We've got her address. All I have to do is call up information and get her telephone number. Would it be all right? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Well, good. It's just the thought of hearing my mother's voice again. Um, hello, my name is Nicole Cavanaugh. I'm calling for my sister, Jody Travis. Oh, oh, any relation to Leonie Travis? She's my neighbor. Yes, yes, that's why we're calling, because we thought that you might be able to put her on the phone. Oh, well, that might be some kind of parlor trick. I mean, she ain't hardly out of bed these... She's sick, you know. Yes, we do know that. That's why we wanted to speak with her. Oh, well, look, honey, the best thing I could do is, is give Leonie a message. You tell me what you want to ask her, I'll tell you what she says. Well, um, all right, if it has to be that way, could you please tell her that her daughter, Jody, would like to come and see her? She never even told me she had a daughter. Well, she does, and Dr. Hilmer came to see us oh, a couple Hilmer. of times. Oh, yeah, I know him from the clinic. He told me she's real bad. Leone, I mean. Please, just tell her that Jody and some friends will be coming to see her in a day or two, all right? Uh, uh, hold on. I'll be right back. I uh, gather she's too sick to come to the phone, huh? Yeah, yeah well, uh, she's still there, at least. That's something. Yeah, that's something. Hey, you can relax, huh? There's nothing to be worried about. No, not worried. Yes, yes, hello, Mrs. Ingersoll. I it's me. I, I just spoke to Leone. And? Well, I, I told you what you said about her daughter, and, and, and she says, forget it. What? Well, she, that's what she said. I mean, she doesn't want to see her daughter or her daughter's friends or anybody else. I'm sorry. Are you sure you explained to her the whole situation? Well, I explained clear enough. Take my word for it. She don't want you here. Well, just tell her that we will be there all the same. Thank you very much. Hey, 
Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Heck. You see my big brother around? Yeah, he was here. You were supposed to be here an hour ago. Yeah, I know. I got hung up with a wiring job uptown. <laughs> Gotta keep the old body and soul together, you know? Yeah. This body and soul is coming apart fast. Oh, what a ham. He's over at the restaurant eating if you want to meet him. Oh, I think I'll pass. He'll just make me pay for the food if I do. How's he doing anyway? Well, he's gung-ho on this Raven Whitney scam. Yeah, I know. That's all he talks about these days. Yeah, but he's got some refinements. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah. The pictures of the station house you took. Oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me Smiley thinks we can make a theater out of this joint. In a way. Tell him he's crazy. Look, you're talking a small fortune to convert a building like this, and who wants to go all the way downtown to see a play anyway? It's not that kind of play. We're gonna use this building for the scam on Raven Whitney. What? We're gonna arrest her after she shoots Jinx A. You're gonna arrest her? Oh. Oh, 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 I get it. You're gonna arrest her and bring her here to the station house. Yep, now look at the next picture. Okay. Looks like a courtroom. Night court. We're gonna arraign her in here, then we're gonna fingerprint her in here, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put her in here. In a jail cell. <laughs> It'll scare the wits out of her and she'll see the light sooner that way. Huh? 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 <laughs> I think you like the idea. Like it? I love it! <laughs> and maybe we can get our theater back! Hello? Hello, Jim? Can you hear me? Yeah. Johnny, is that you? you? I can hear you a lot better without you shouting. I'm calling long distance from St. Eleonora. What are you using, a megaphone? Relax, kid. Connection's perfect. <laughs> Smiley told me to call in tonight, tell you how things are going. Yeah, well, he was here, but he got hungry. It takes a long time to get a call off the island. I couldn't help it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm here. What's going on? It is terrific, Jimmy. No kidding. Terrific. Blue skies and white sands. <sighs> Cut the travel log. What's happening with Raven Whitney? That's the best part. She is the prettiest rich widow I have ever seen. Well, good for you. And this is the best news of all. And tell this to Smiley. Raven Whitney is crazy about me. You'll be comfortable here, Sky. And I'll be able to take good care of you. I think the best thing to do is to go straight to bed. Yeah, but look, I'm not going to take your bedroom. I'll just sleep here in the couch. That's all right. This is your own bedroom, Sky. Mine is over there. Uh, I just, uh, I don't want you making any sacrifices. <laughs> Come along, my poor darling. Let me help you. Libby, never mind the endearing terms. You're not his wife. Remember that. I wish this could last forever. So do I. But it can't. You're not leaving. I'm afraid so. When? Tomorrow. Oh, no. Rent. I'd have some business to take care of back home. Where's home? It's in the Midwest. Where? Monticello. Monticello? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. Ah. Uh, Oh, Lance, I have news for you. You're not going home alone. He's sleeping again. Good. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Especially in front of him. Say things like what? Remarks about my not being his wife. It's the truth, Libby. The only reason I brought you in was to make sure that he was well cared for in that place. Well, I know why you cared. I cared because I was curious. He looked too much like that other man. Well, I cared just as much. And I consider myself your equal partner, Spencer. Maybe even more. God knows I have done more for him than you have. Yes, I suppose that's true. You did a great deal for him in Switzerland. 
But you're not in Switzerland anymore. You won't be needing this. I saw no reason to leave that behind me. What about this, Libby? Wake 